Hello chess friends, this is King's Executor showing you the third lecture about the Sicilian Khan variation which leads to our hedgehog formation or it's the it's our aim to get it and this game is between Alexander Morozovic and Peter Swidler and today we'll see quite a sharp uh, variation of the Sicilian Khan so Morozovic opened with e4, Swidler replied with this Sicilian, and now e6, our Sicilian Khan move order here, and a6. There are different moves possible, uh, but a6 is one of the most common. And this is the Marochi bind setup for white, trying to make it very difficult for black to break through with either b5 or d5 which you are planning to get in later after uh, correct preparation knight f6 and the e-pawn cannot be pushed like this because simply of check and winning the pawn here with check so after knight f6 Protecting the pawn is correct. Queen c7 now, which we prepared with a6 and e6, so that these squares are taken away from the white knights. a3 here, um, which you might not see as a very accurate move, but it is. Because let's say white just plays bishop d3, then you have different approaches. Knight c6 is one possibility, just attacking the undefended knight. But bishop b4 has a threat of simply uh, take the knight and double white's pawns. And if white would just allow that, then you see that these pawns are quite ridiculous um, after d6 fixing the weaknesses white has the bishop pair but because of this um, really hindering uh, pawn, uh, pawn uh, double pawns here isolated double pawns these bishops cannot really uh, be activated properly and they have not that much of a range, especially this bishop here. So you could try to attack these pawns, and if your opponent plays perfectly, this is just a variation, then you might just simply stick to common sense chess moves. And this is the uh, hedgehog formation here for black. And you'll see that black is fine. If white ever overplays this position, then you can just simply take these pawns afterwards. Um, white really has to wait and play solidly and not overplay, or else these weaknesses will tell. If white cannot find anything correct and plays a waiting move, um, then you can either play something like a waiting move too, preparing maybe uh, at some point to go here if correct and uh, another move would be knight c5 at some point but you could just play waiting moves for yourselves bishop a8 rook b8 and rook back and stuff like that and there's really nothing going on here. Just let's move back to this uh, position of the variation. I mean, we are deviating from the game now, but just to make you familiar with the opening. Uh, there is one very tricky line here if we just play knight b6 attacking the weak pawn. Then, in fact, white is winning because of tactics. Let's look at them, they're quite uh, unbelievable. 
e5 and however you play now black is losing for example pawn takes knight e8 to take away the d6 square for the bishop from the bishop then just rook takes knight and here is the check 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 and now this very nice mate thanks to this bishop after knight b6 attacking the weak pawn e5 again if we would now take on c4 which uh, is taken because the bishop and w was hanging and now pawn takes pawn takes and now knight e8 take away the square we have knight takes e6 and if you take that you cannot recapture the piece because of the same mating idea so in this position knight b6 wouldn't be possible but I would doubt that your opponent would uh, find the very best uh, continuation but it's possible because e5 is a move he wants to play even if he doesn't see the correct continuation so this was the line with bishop d3 and bishop b4 to not allow bishop b4 uh, Morozovic played a3 which is I think the main line in this position because this bishop b4 idea is so strong knight takes e4 this is a variation uh, which you shouldn't play unprepared um, because after takes takes and knight um, sorry queen e5 pinning the knight and well if it's uh, protected this way we can take the other knight or else after say if e th uh, f3 we could play f5 or d5 d5 should be better so th this was this is the game continuation and now castles and in this position you see that black is up a pawn but he's only developed his queen which is in the middle of the board there's bishop e3 um, and white has castled so there's really a huge lead in development for, wo uh, for white to compensate him f5 is the game continuation bishop e3 kicking the queen and now there is actually the possibility to take on b2 which is again um, you know delaying black's development after knight c5 which you don't want to take because then your dark squares will be very weak You see, you're lacking dark square at bishop. You have problems with castling and so on. Um, for example, knight c6, knight a4 kicking the queen, knight b6 attacking the rook, bishop f4 attacking the rook, which might. <laughs> uh, Provoke, uh, provoke the move e5 bishop back to e3 and now the knight has a square on d5 because we pushed our pawn and now you see this king is stuck in the middle of the board white has castled these pawns are maybe prematurely pushed this knight is very active uh, it's very difficult to play this position uh, because of knight d5 queen f7 is a move and now Queen b1 attacks the pawn here. So after f4, knight 
d5 is possible because after takes and takes and queen h5 there is check for white and after king d8 queen b6 and I mean black must be very strong to find the only move here to keep the draw with e5 uh, ex excuse me <laughs> e4 that's the move but it's so uh, difficult to find and black is all over the shop here the king is in the center the rooks can come into the game easily and the queen is ready to uh, give checks so after bishop e3 queen e5 was played not taking the pawn which you shouldn't do generally um, taking early pawns in the center uh, in the opening f4 and if now uh, queen takes pawn then the queen is lost the knight controls these squares the bishop controls this square the pawn controls this square and here the queen controls this square the pawn controls this square this is also controlled by a pawn and this is controlled by the bishop so queen c7 was played a retreat and knight g5 bishop c5 now black got to move his first piece check g6 and queen h3 now the knight is being kicked but it's not really being kicked because of the pin on the h file and after the bishop is protected by the almost overloaded queen because it has to pin this pawn so that piece is not hanging here queen b6 again attacking the piece and now this nice tactic which is not really working in white's favor but I mean black looks very solid here <laughs> in one hand on the one on one hand uh, so the sacrifice is quite complicated black took with the pawn but let's see what happens after one of the engine suggestions after check takes we take a piece now and after the rooks double on the e-file we can even take the pawn after check king e8 and check for king queen d1 and after knight c6 check queen b6 is the only move now we can take the um, exchange here and after check king a7 unbelievably white has only a repetition here you can even throw in this sacrifice because there's only a repetition and this should be a draw or black would be winning being material ahead here um, after bishop takes f5 pawn takes f5 which is better I believe after check king d8 this fork which is almost the same as in the um, variation before king c7 and after takes and king h1 black took the pawn to take this piece in the corner queen f7, queen d4 centralization and after rook takes queen takes boldly on c4 even opening up the c file but because of knight c6 later on 
there is nothing to be afraid of. Rook f e1 and the other pawn is a goner as well. Knight e5, knight c uh, sorry, rook e5, knight c6, and after rook takes and rook to f1, black starts unshuffling his pieces. B5 and after giving the king some luft well black is thinking of activating his bishop to get the rook out right but he can't do it right now because of the pressure on d7 so Swidler played h5 to decoy the queen now bishop b7 is possible and this bishop is quite strong on this long diagonal and the reason is if now black were to uh, attack if white were to attack black here then we would see how nice the pieces work together on the black side because now the rook is attacked bishop and queen has a nice battery is a nice battery against the white king and after rook g3 bishop c6 solidifying here queen g5 solidifying uh, himself we can even take the pawn so queen g5 just to protect g2 from this battery so that r the rook on f3 can go elsewhere now the rook got out and white really missed his attack of course his only real trump is the pawn here or these two pawns but they are protecting the king knight e5 centralization and solidifying the black camp here now it's quite easy for black being the exchange up having passed pawns and yeah the pieces really protect the king nicely this knight really blocks the dark squares towards the king and this bishop blocks the c-file and in this case the rooks are quite ineffective d6 to uh, station the knight in the center forever rook e3 white really has no concrete plan here just trying to hold things and after the exchange of pieces black got, got to push his pawn This is now an easy mop up job here. Yeah, very nice. And after queen d6 check and king b5, Morozovic resigned to Peter Swidler. So, this was an example of a very, um, very, very tricky line with knight takes e4 and queen e5 and after bishop d3 just take the knight or play d5 to win the other knight if takes takes I don't know bishop e3 we can take this immediately or even play something like this because there is a second piece here and well I wouldn't recommend this line if you are not really well prepared with an engine uh, but this is a possibility I hope I've demonstrated with knight takes e4 here 
and this shows just the complex nature of the of the Sicilian Khan. It's not just always a passive position, and it's not uh, always solid. I hope you like this one. See you next time. Thanks.